communication and leadership skills. Um, why I talk about this in the data science meetup, like I mentioned before, right? Data, science, data scientists, you are a problem solver. And uh, it's very rare that you have the data ready and then you just present your result to other science people. You work on, you can work on the team where other people don't speak your data science language. Um, going back to the example where I mentioned, right? The first, my first uh, um, presentation to marketing people. You, you, if you um, just think about what, what they're interested in, what problem they're trying to solve. And sometimes thinking is not gonna help you, right? Because you didn't know marketing. Even if you do some research on marketing, it's not gonna be the same for them. And so how do you learn how to speak their language? It's very simple, just ask them. Um, it's very important when you start working, the meeting, the communication doesn't always to happen in the actual time you schedule the meeting. If you want to have effective meeting, it starts before the meeting. So for example, you can search who are the uh, key stakeholders in this meeting. And for example, uh, you, you see the, pro the, the your data science project is going to a product manager and this product manager is going to um, this uh, going to own this entire product, right? Then before the meeting, you need to show your results or your presentation to this product manager to make sure this is what they want. And if they have questions, you can explain, um, or maybe they're confused, uh, great. That means you get some feedback and you can change your uh, presentation or your documents earlier. Uh, so make sure you, um, if you have a meeting, um, just search a little bit to see who's going to be in the meeting and then uh, communicate with the key players in the meeting before you actually go into the meeting and make, make sure you get, get some feedback. Because if we, they already tell you what they don't like about your presentation and then you fix them and it's more likely for them to be on board when you present, right? And instead of you get blindsided by their question and then you don't even, uh, you're not even prepared. Um, and uh, another thing is sometimes uh, if you work with a different team, for example, your team think this is a great data science project, the engineering team should launch it. But engineering team, again, they might have their own ideas, right? It doesn't mean, again, there's no right and wrong. Um, and uh, I have seen data scientists sometimes can be very defensive. Sometimes in the meetings, it becomes a fight. Um, and it's not very helpful for, in terms of, uh, finishing a project, right? I would say instead of feeling uh, defensive, because again, like we all work very hard on a project, especially when we think about how much data we have collected, the pipeline they're building. Um, if they have pushback, try to understand why they are pushing back. Is it because um, it's not their priority? Is it because they don't have uh, enough people to help? Again, um, if um, is there something your manager can help you resolve this issue? And if you're in a meeting, uh, you're the only person invited to the meeting and then the other team's manager or senior principal engineer in the meeting and you know you might get pushed back and what do you do? You, you, no matter how much you prepare, if you're a, a junior data scientist, it's very hard for you to um, convince them, right? Um, Oh, I, I don't mean you can't, but it, it will be hard. So at that time, you need to have some sponsors from your team. You can just ask your manager, hey, well, uh, they invited their senior manager to the meeting and then I'm the only one on the team. I believe this is an important project. I want to get this launched. Can you come to the meeting with me? Um, or there's a senior data scientist, brief them about this project, say, I need you to come to the meeting um, to support me. Of course, you don't want to blind support. The, the people you invite from your team um, also need to understand your, your model, your approach. And if they uh, disagree, you need to also resolve it um, offline because you don't want them to disagree, your people on your team to disagree with them um, during a meeting. But it still happens. Sometimes your people from your team might disagree with you on the meeting. Just don't 
again, don't feel uh, defensive. Don't feel like, oh, are they trying to, you know, undermine me? No, because um, sometimes you you don't you only think of some problem on a certain time. Maybe they just didn't think of that before. Just uh, uh, again, just don't get combative or defensive or easily uh, offended. Uh, look at the problem from a position where you want to solve the problem, do great work instead of uh, turning everything into an attack. It's not always about you, right? It's about the problem you're trying to solve. It's about the value you add to the team and the, the product. Um, and uh, the second one, influence. Um, I talked about if you uh, don't have a lot of influence, you can leverage your manager's influence, other people's influence. Um, and also influence comes from also uh, if you prepare for a presentation, you think this model is important. The influence can comes from how well this is aligned with their goal. And if your product is also important um, for their team, maybe uh, it's easier for you to influence their decisions, right? Can you find a angle where you can have a win-win situation if they help you, they, the, the other team help you, the other team support you, right? How do you leverage uh, those resources? And if you feel you don't know enough about the other team, one thing is to communicate with your manager and also meet with them, maybe meet with them one-on-one -on -one before um, to get their uh, perspective before the meeting. And the third one is, is ownership. Um, before I talk about ownership, in my pre uh, introduction, we mentioned I have a, I have a patent on A-B testing and actually work on the patent. Um, the first year when I started in Amazon. Um, how did that, how did that happen? So um, I wasn't the main contributor for the patent, but my senior data scientist on that team, uh, she need help with the work. And this piece of work is, is, is not related to something I was originally assigned. So I could totally say, oh, I don't want to do that because it's, is outside of my scope. I can, you know, just uh, push back. Um, but because I just started, I think when you started, um, it's hard to uh, know what is important, what is not important, when to say yes, when to say no. Um, maybe I would suggest uh, try to say more yes when you just uh, started. I know um, a lot of people saying, oh, if you say too much yes, um, that could be a lot of work or um, you, you will get lost in priorities. Um, again, your manager can help you prioritize, but if you have some bandwidth, um, you can say yes more because you don't know what this project will turn into. So um, I did that because I want to help my, uh, the senior scientist on her project. And then uh, in the end, I work with her and this becomes a pattern. And then because I contributed a lot in this project and then everybody who worked on that um, were added to the pattern. So, and also it can come in, another example would be, we have a sister team and uh, I found there's some issue in how they collect data, right? There's always gonna be a lot of issue in data collection. Um, so what I can do is I can just say, hey, there's an issue in your data. And then I just leave it to them. But you need to also know that sometimes um, there, other people might not take your feedback that seriously. They, again, they have their work to do. They don't care whether their data quality issue uh, affects your model. So what I did was I believe the data quality issue was very important to fix. So I worked with them closely. I said, okay, like if you don't have time, I can have time. I can work on this. I can help you figure out. Again, I'm not an engineer on that team. Um, in the end, I still need their help to implement the uh, the change of the bug I found, but I can be a investigator to find where is that bug. Is this the data science work you learn in school? Is this some type of fancy modeling? No, it's not. I was simply an investigator. Um, again, this tied back to the importance of problem solving because this is important to ensure high data quality. So I help them solve the problem. And because it's not their high priority, but a bug is still a bug. And then the other team was very appreciate my work there. And then they also gave great feedback to my manager. So a lot of people 
um, when they think about project, they just want to do their own thing. They get annoyed when other people ask them for help. Um, I, I sometimes feel that way too. Like I, I have my own project and who's gonna help me? And then this is going to be uh, up to you to find a balance between completing your own priorities, not get burned out. But also uh, if you think about your entire work, as a uh, portfolio, right? If you are investment portfolio, what we want to do? We want to um, allocate asset, we want to diversify, we want to mitigate the risk, right? Because sometimes one data science project, is, uh, it's possible that it won't yield into any results. Um, it's, it's totally possible. Maybe some other project you invested in actually have good results. So um when you have time um help other people but not like i i was lucky right those two projects i helped had good results um have good uh, help to my career but there are also other projects that helped it didn't do anything for me um and if you always think about the results what does it do for you um in the, in the end you might not feel um you might not feel fulfilled um and also other people on your team. Because if you do this, other people might see you as always, oh, just being selfish and thinking about your own success. Um, so just be, be generous and helping other people and maybe um, someday uh, other people are more willing to help you as well. Um, so it's hard again to find a balance between uh, work and the life and uh, at the work um, there's a, a, we don't always talk about like care about your um, coworkers or something, but if you work with them with a sense of, you know, you care about your coworkers project, you genuinely want to help, then you will, um, you will be seen as a, as a very good collaborator on your team. And then maybe other people want to collaborate with you in, in the future. Um, so being a team player, player, have ownership and uh, uh, be be generous uh, whenever um, you're capable of.